Astral. In today's ever-changing battlefield, where advanced technology dominates and military arsenals bristle with cutting-edge weaponry, one might question the relevance of a weapon born from the annals of the Cold War era. Meet the rocket-propelled grenades, or RPG-7, a name with a long history in global conflicts. This weapon has once again come into the spotlight due to its use in the conflict in Ukraine. But as we stand on the cusp of a new era in warfare, it begs the question. Is the RPG-7 still effective? Can this seemingly ancient anti-tank rocket launcher still claim its place as a weapon for all seasons? Stay tuned as we explore the answer to these questions. Recent news reports have emphasized the successful deployment of anti-tank weaponry in Ukraine, including the US-made FGM-148 Javelin and British NLAW systems. Interestingly, the Cold War era RPG-7, initially designed by the Soviet Union to counter Western tanks, has demonstrated remarkable efficacy against the Russian tanks present in Ukraine. However, to fully understand its significance, we must trace the RPG-7's journey from its origin. So, when does the story of RPG-7 start? The origins of the RPG-7 can be traced back to the aftermath of World War II, when Soviet military planners sought to counter the threat posed by armored tanks. Inspired by the success of American bazooka rocket launchers and German Panzerschreck, Soviet designers embarked on creating their version of a handheld anti-tank grenade launcher. The result was the RPG-2, which, although introduced in the late 1940s, only entered service in the mid-1950s due to production delays. Despite its limitations, the RPG-2 found its place in Cold War arsenals around the world. The RPG-2 served as the precursor to the RPG-7, which made its debut in 1961. Its numbering remains a mystery. The leap in numbering from 2 to 7 hints at a series of prototypes that did not meet expectations. The RPG-7, however, became an iconic anti-tank rocket launcher, with more than 9 million units produced globally. Indeed, the RPG-7 had seen it all, from the early days of the conflict when people fought with outdated rifles to the more recent battles where modern main battle tanks rolled in, confident in their armor. But how effective is the RPG-7 in this modern era? To evaluate its effectiveness first, let's see what RPG-7 is capable of. The RPG-7, a reusable single-shot smoothbore steel tube measuring 40 millimeter in diameter, boasted several improvements over its predecessor. A key feature was the addition of a wooden or bakelite cover around the barrel, protecting the operator from the heat generated during rocket launch. Furthermore, the RPG-7 introduced a second handle, enhancing grip and control for the operator. Iron sights became standard, but various optical and night vision sights could be employed, enhancing its adaptability on the battlefield. What makes the weapon so popular is its ability to fire four to six rounds per minute, its cost effectiveness, and ease of use. It boasts a maximum effective range of about 3,000 feet, with optimal effectiveness at approximately 650 feet. At this distance, there's a roughly 50% chance of hitting a slow-moving target like a tank or vehicle. The operation of the RPG-7 is also relatively straightforward. Its design allows for firing from within buildings, thanks to its relatively small backblast. When fired, the rocket initially exits the launcher slowly, with its internal rocket motor igniting after about 33 feet. 
pulling the trigger propels the grenade from the launcher at a speed of roughly 384 feet per second, accompanied by the unfolding of four stabilization fins to maintain its trajectory. Finally, in determining the effectiveness of the RPG-7, we must consider the context and objectives of its use. What does it mean for a weapon to be effective in contemporary warfare? In terms of its original design and intended role, the RPG-7 remains effective. While the RPG-7 may not guarantee the complete destruction of a modern tank, it can still be used strategically to disable the tank in various ways. For instance, targeting the tank's treads can immobilize it, causing it to become stuck or move in circles until repairs are made. Also, hitting the tank from the rear can damage the engine, further reducing its combat capabilities. In urban battlefields where proximity to tanks is achievable, the RPG-7 regains its effectiveness. The U.S. military experienced this vulnerability during the Iraq War when several Abrams tanks were penetrated and destroyed by RPG-7 shots from unexpected angles. Notably, the RPG-7's efficacy extends beyond anti-tank capabilities. It can neutralize armored personnel carriers, buildings, and fortifications with alarming efficiency. Surprisingly, it can target helicopters and artillery with a single shot. Its high-speed projectiles make it difficult for helicopters to evade close-range RPG shots. Famous incidents like the downing of Black Hawk helicopters in Mogadishu and the shooting down of 128 U.S. helicopters during the Vietnam War highlight its effectiveness. In this case, RPG-7 outperformed many Soviet-made man-portable air defense missile systems. However, in a world where modern militaries boast advanced anti-tank guided missile systems like the FGM-148 Javelin and British N-Law, the RPG-7 may not compete head-on in terms of technology and precision. These systems offer greater range and accuracy, making them more suitable for engaging contemporary armored threats. However, the RPG-7's continued presence on the battlefield speaks to a different kind of effectiveness. It thrives in asymmetric conflicts where adaptability, affordability, and accessibility are key. Its cost effectiveness is exemplified by the fact that a launcher costs around $2,000, with each rocket priced at $100 to $500. In comparison, it provides a modest 50 to 50 chance of hitting a target, yet it remains an attractive option for forces with limited budgets. Ultimately, RPG-7's effectiveness depends on whether we define effectiveness by its ability to destroy million-dollar armored vehicles or its ability based on its original design and intended role. While it may not be the ideal choice against modern main battle tanks, it remains a versatile and valuable weapon in the right hands for specific combat scenarios. So do you think the RPG-7 is still effective in today's war? Will it be here to stay for many years to come? Let us know in the comment below and thanks for watching.